management actually why a good nutrition is important to restore uh, nutrition balance to, to minimize any food related discomfort for wound healing to increase immunity level to avoid any weight loss and of course for better quality of life so for calorie requirement for cancer patient patient on ongoing treatment uh, based on empiric formula is 25 to 30 kilocal per kg body weight and for protein above 1 gram possible 1.5 gram if let's say patient have this kidney problem maybe you uh, tend to uh, keep at 1 to 1.2 gram per kg body weight for patient uh, undergoing um, this uh, bone marrow transplant for the first month you can increase up to 35 if patient have this severe malnutrition you can increase up to 45 kilocal per kg body weight protein up to 2.0 uh, gram per kg body weight and to have this adequate fluid intake for hydration and renal health and this type of patient usually they more tolerate to small and frequent meal of plant whole consistency and then you you can progress the diet to normal diet as a uh, patient tolerated the common issue for this uh, patient on uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplant actually obesity diabetic okay because high bmi uh, associated with increase of GVHD and non-relapse mortality and pre-transplantation diabetic or hyperglycemia are also shown to increase the risk factor for non-relapse mortality. So um, we need to use the guide to beneficial to maintain its uh, integrity and improve glucose uh, control but the, the major limitation for this uh, enteral nutrition is difficulty to insert the um, EN, uh, EN tube or nasogastric tube or nasojejunal tube because of the severe mucositis and GIT damage so parenteral nutrition is still the commonly uh, used source of nutrition so this is a study that done in Switzerland so for patient undergoing hematopoietic stem cell transplant so it's depending on in, uh, institution uh, some of them are using parenteral or enteral uh, depending on the characteristic of this patient so the target blood glucose should be normal level for patient un, uh, undergoing hematopoietic stem cell transplant okay as the recommendation for cancer patient uh, for vitamin and trace elements, uh, need to follow the RNI or RDA and discourage to use any high dose of macronutrient because at the moment there's no specific nutritional guideline on this macronutrient. However, when inadequate intake or increased losses of micronutrient are, suspect, are suspected, a multivite or um, any mineral supplement may be appropriate but this one is uh, under oncologist or pharmacist uh, to assess it okay for patient with advanced cancer undergoing chemo or at risk uh, weight loss or malnourished the supplementation of omega-3 fatty acid or fish oil may be appropriate okay to improve appetite for intake lean body mass or weight okay so the re recommendation for this epa is two gram to cram per day okay and but clinical judgment must be used to determine what level of nutrition care should be based on this estimate because this is the guideline so when we see the patient uh, we need to use this guideline in our clinical judgment so the choices of nutrition therapy we have this ons enteral or parenteral so uh, the nutrition intervention for cancer patient actually to increase the oral intake so increase oral intake uh, include dietary advice the treatment of the symptom or any nutrition impact symptom or offering this ons and for nutrition therapy also should uh, initiated when patients are not yet malnourished if let's say patient on ccrt on this combined combination treatment maybe you can start 
uh, this uh, ONS early as to prevent the malnutrition. So EN is recommended if oral nutritional remains inadequate despite nutritional intervention. So if patient unable to eat adequately, oral intake kurang separuh dah uh, more than one week or let's say 50 to 75 percent more than two weeks start this enteral nutrition. So the uh, the nutritional intervention increased slowly over uh, several days. Okay, this is actually to prevent the refeeding syndrome because refeeding sy syndrome actually it can mimic if let's say patient have this prolonged fasting, prolonged fasting, uh, admit refer dietitian. So you need to assess patient well. Okay, uh, the, not to be that ambitious but you need to assess patient well. So this is a several possible ways to achieve this goal, okay? And the, the indication for PN, if you want to set PN, uh, need to be um, well, the indication is well, okay? Then only uh, you can suggest for PN. Uh, for evidence supporting nutritional intervention, yes, it's improved weight loss. Uh, do increase the overall energy intake but not survival and for patient undergoing a juvenile uh, radiotherapy uh, nutrient support it, it do help in improve intake weight and quality of life but the result is less conclusive for chemotherapy patient so for patient uh, radiotherapy at head neck thorax or gastrointestinal tract the adequacy of uh, protein energy uh, is very, very important. And then for the use of tube feeding, uh, whether you want to suggest for rice tube or for nasogastric or PEG, if let's say patient have this radiation-induced mucositis or in obstructive tumors of the head, neck or thorax. Okay. So to maintain the swallowing function also is very, very important. You need to work closely with the speech language pathology to screen and to manage dysphagia and also to educate patients to maintain their swallowing function even they on temporary on this uh, rice tube. Uh, for radiotherapy patient per se, glutamine, probiotic, still there is an insufficient consistent clinical data. And the, the because of this, the most side effect of patient getting from this radiotherapy, PN actually is not recommended as the general treatment in radiotherapy, okay? Still patient need to adequate uh, the intake using the oral or enteral nutrition unless it is indicated baru kita startkan dengan PN okay as for bone marrow transplant uh, patient uh, during this intensive chemotherapy or after stem cell transplant also adequate nutrition intake and then if uh, let's say patient unable to meet you can uh, suggest for enteral or parenteral EN actually is still the preferred route uh, then parenteral unless it's indicated severe mucositis, intactable vomiting, ileus, severe malabsorption, uh, uh, very, very severe diarrhea or uh, even in the symptomatic GVHD. And for the usage of glutamine um, for this group of patients, also there's an inconsistent clinical data. So low bacteria diet, actually there's no evidence to support um, the usage of this low bacteria diet or neutropenic diet for patients more than 30 months after allogenic transplantation. But this food restriction is very greatly by institution. However, we need to educate patients on food safety, food uh, hygiene and a high risk food restriction, especially when handling immunosuppressive patient. Okay, just uh, food to avoid, just as a reference, uh, for example, uh, regarding the neutropenic guidelines. And then uh, usually the neutropenic guidelines, maybe sometimes it's for three months, sometimes for one month, you know, and it's very uh, 
uh, greatly according to institution. Okay, nutrition counselling. Counselling actually is our first line of nutrition therapy. So, uh, the best way actually to consume normal food, tak perlu nak tambah any ONS. But if let's say patient has this difficult to achieve high calorie and high protein diet, to, of, to offer nutritional, oral nutritional supplement. So, uh, the concept of feed the tumour are not supported by evidence related to clinical outcome and should not be used to refuse, diminish or stop feeding. Reaching calorie and protein targets is very, very difficult during cancer treatment. So, protein, high protein diet. So, when you constantly focus on good uh, fats, uh, have this balance of carbohydrate intake. Okay.